Hey. Uh, hey. Hello, how are you? Hi. Welcome to, uh, Crimson Daggers Blood Sports. Crim Dag Blood Sports. If you don't know, this is the event in which we, uh, judge our character challenges. Yep. And, uh, this week's, or two weeks, uh, two, two, two week challenge was Swamp Elder. You had to do a, an elder in a swamp. Yeah. It had to be an original idea. Mm -hmm. Original as in not the first thing you think of. You just plan for it. You do some research about swamps, show us what you did, what you learned from it, what you learned about the dominant species of the swamp, anything like that that could inform your decisions as to what a swamp elder could possibly be. Yep. And then you had to show us studies with everything you did, and... Uh, yeah, you just basically had to show your thought process, everything that you learned, and what you did to sort of bring something new to that kind of generalized idea. Yep. We have the top three. We had about, uh, I think it was 33 entries, which is great. Yeah, just so you guys know, it's not going to be like last time where we go through every single person. We're just doing the top three now. Yeah, that would be impossible. So yeah, going through 33 people would be crazy. Yeah, we'd be on here all night. Because, you know, this thing's just going to keep on growing, so we have to find ways to be able to, you know, devote enough attention to the the few people who are in the top, you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so, everybody, is this working good? Can you guys hear us okay? Is it being laggy or weird before we get into the judging? Yeah. We just need to know. I got the chat open in another computer. Audio's all fine. Everything's hey, fine. Awesome. All right, cool. Yeah, it was lagging before. Not anymore. Okay, so first we got Lee Piffninger. I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry. Piffninger. Piff. Feninger. Feninger. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's just Feninger. Feninger. Lee. Hey, awesome stuff, Lee. Yeah, this is uh, this is great. Automatically, I thought the swamp from the movie The Patriot. Yeah. And, uh... That's what it is. You got an original design. He's sort of like a... He reminds me of, like, an old person. He reminds me of a turtle. He reminds me of an alligator. Yeah. He's a combination of all sorts of stuff. It's really simple. You got the idea of old with the gray in the background. It's moody. He's got a cane. You know that he's been there for a while. There's ruins everywhere. He it's threw in some graceful birds to contrast what he looks like, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I really like this image. You, uh, you know, obviously you put thought into it. You didn't just run with what's expected. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really liked it. The only crit I have, I also really like it. The only the only crit I would give you on this is uh, the environment of the swamp isn't too prominent. Yeah. You've put some ruins in the background and you've hinted at some trees and water, but you didn't really push that swamp environment to a to a degree of uh, finish. You know what I mean? But the character works really well, and the mood of the swamp is there. So. Yeah, the the few things I like a lot are, you know, your studies of the alligator. You know, you you did studies of the swamp area here. And, uh, you know, you did some mood studies. That's all cool. But like Dan said, it would have been better if you could have incorporated more of that into your final image. Because yeah. as you can see in the background, I mean, like, you, you did just kind of toss in some trees. If there's no reason there can't be vines and moss and grossness on those rocks, you know? Like, if the trees are going to be implied, bring the swampiness into the foreground. Put some really detailed lily pads or driftwood sticking out of the water, you know, grow some stuff on the rocks, you know? That's the only real crit. Yeah, and add something in the foreground in front of him, too. You know, like, something to break it up so that there's something up front, mid-ground, background. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, good job. Good nice job. original idea of what the concept could be and uh, good execution overall next up next up is Alex Negrias Alex you did two 
Yeah, but I'm only putting up one. Only putting up one. But yeah. But yeah, this is cool. Uh, I mean, your execution is great. Your application of the studies is great. You know, I can tell that you put a lot into it. I'll zoom in on for everybody to look at. So as you can see, you know, he did a lot. Um, this is exactly what we're looking for as far as this challenge goes. See, like, each one of the things that he added, he studied so that it looks accurate. So, I mean, like, if you look at the mushroom, it's on, I mean, like, the fungus. It's right there on his shoulder. It's the same exact thing as the study. He applied it, learned it, and I'm sure that it got ingrained in his mind. Yep. The yeah. only crits I would have, again, going to do this again. I like the image. I like what you did. The only crits I'd have is, is two things. One thing is you changed the illustration up and made it more of a narrative by adding a house in the very far background and a little girl or boy standing in the field in front of the house. Now, because you did this, it changes the whole purpose of the image. And immediately, instead of throwing in that little tiny dot in the background of a kid standing in the field, it doesn't work. It would be more satisfying if the kid was somewhere more of the foreground. Yeah. Be behind the thing, hiding behind a tree, looking scared, in the foreground, ducking down in the water. You know, like, you need to bring the kid into the illustration and not just throw him into the background because the way you did it, he looks tacked on and unnecessary. Yeah. You could just as easily erase the house and the kid and have this be just the character in the environment. But by adding them in and making them so small and unimportant, it actually detracts from the image. Yeah, like I expect something different from the image because that's there. I expect yeah. it to be like a piece in the book, you know what I mean? Like that this character, yeah. this little kid is seeing this monster that exists in our world. Yeah. And it's sort of kind of crazy that he's there in this normal that, environment. If that thing's turning and looking over its shoulder, being all creepy, then immediately I think the kid should be in the foreground hiding behind a stump or something scared out of his mind. Yeah. Like, you no, know, throwing him in the background, just tacking him in just seems kind of lazy. But that being said, you did a really great job, and I know you're not lazy because you did a ton of work, you did a ton of studies. It's just a compositional thing where if the kid's supposed to be in it, really bring him into it. The only other crit we had for this. Not to be mean, we just got to be honest with you, Alex. Yeah, it's just the originality. Yeah, this is, when you think of Swamp Elder, this is the first place the mind goes. This is the character that all the concept artists would draw for a Blizzard game. This is like the immediate thing of, okay, it's a dude made out of wood. He's creeping around in the swamp. But the thing is, is that as, as kind of, you know, I don't want to use the word like bland for the design, but it, it kind of is. But the thing is, is that you didn't even do like the legs, like the lower body just becomes this mass of mud. And with, with, the, with the top of the body so fleshed out, it makes me feel like you just didn't really want to do the legs because he, he looks so active from the waist up that it doesn't make any sense from the out of a lower body. So not only is it expected, it almost seems a little unfinished. Yeah, but the thing is about the design being unfinished is that, is that like like what Dan said, if he's going to be rooted into the ground, he should look satisfied that he's rooted into the ground because he's been yeah. there for hundreds of years. Yeah, because right, it looks like he's creeping. It looks like he's stalking something. And if he's just a pile of mud with a body coming out of it, he can't stalk anything, you know? Yeah. You've got this, you've got this really lith, thin body that implies it's something that walks around and does active things but it's rooted into a mound. If it's part of a mound, he'd be fatter, he'd be stumpier, he wouldn't be this thin, creepy, wraith-like thing. Yeah, right? but uh, that was that's the only thing, and that's my main criticism for a lot of this stuff, and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen over and over in the challenge, just because we all get through this the same way. Um, it's basically the idea of doing pretty much exactly what you've seen, and the thing about it is, is that, like, sure, that'll get you a job, but you don't want to just get a job, you know, you want to be remembered for doing something, you know, more unique. And it's like, it's not that it's bad. Again, you did a great job. This is great. You know, it's, it's a very well rendered image. You put a lot of time and effort into it. It's all great. But push the concept. Go someplace that hasn't, you know, been done before. Go, go do something that's... Uh, that, that makes even more sense than that guy being in the moss. Like, what would make even more sense than that? Or at least if you're going to do a moss man, do something like, you know, like a rooted moss dude. Like, do something in a way that hasn't been done before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not even that you can't ever do that concept. It's fine. You know, you can do that concept. But do it in a way 
you know, that's not expected. Because this, like Dan says, it looks like a character that I would see in a game if I were to think, like, I'm in the swamp, what do I find? You know, like, what lives there? What's the bad yeah. guy? I expect to see this. And the real the real areas of flavor that you could have enhanced to make it a little more original, like, you know, you added those bright mushrooms just on the shoulder. If they were growing down the arm or making some kind of pattern and not just tacked onto one spot, like, you know, there's little things you can do to distract from, like, you know, a recognizable idea to make it seem a little more original, but none of those risks were really taken. But I want to stress again, for the second time in a row, you've you've done the best job with doing the studies and applying them to the illustration, and it really shows. Your work is insanely better as a result of doing that. Yeah. And I just want to stress that, you know, regardless of all the stuff we're saying, you did an excellent job. Yep. And here is the next one. Uh, this one is by... Why didn't I write your name down? <laughs> your name's Sam McMurthy. And it's the swamp elder, giant snake, you know, about to eat some dude. And uh, it's really cool. It is, this is the pretty much Murchie. Yeah, McMurchy. McMurchy, sorry. Sam, Sh Sam is not your Sean. name either. Sean McMurchy. <laughs> Sam Carr is here. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Yeah, it's Sean McMurchy. That's your yeah. Sean Murchie. But yeah, I really love your concept. It's it's pretty much the exact opposite critique of Alex's. Yeah. Whereas uh you know, you could have pushed it even more to a finish, but I like your idea so much that the originality is what brings me into it, is that like Swamp Elder, oh, okay, this does make sense, you know, because in a swamp or something like an anaconda can like destroy like anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like stuff like that's awesome because you really, you know, had some thought in it. I don't expect to see this. Like it's cool, I, and I like the way you incorporate it. Sort of like uh, the feathers coming out of it. Yeah. You know, like it. It looks colorful, but it also I can tell that it's old, like a god or something that lives in the swamp. Yeah, it's really cool how you incorporated the warm colors in it too. You're one of the only people that took a risk doing that. Yeah, and it still feels swampy. You know, you still got, like, the fog. You still got the murky water and, you know, the dulls, dull colors in the background. But he bounces off of that because of that. Yeah. Obviously, you know, things you could have done to push it farther just because we are giving little crits. You know, finishing it would have been a big thing. Doing more work with the swamp in the background would have been a big thing. I like what you did showing the um, the top of the water line and a little bit underwater, but you didn't show much of the underwater. If you had showed more of it and actually showed the depth as it got really murky really quick with like you know, dead dead logs and things down there, maybe with the snake's body wrapping around things so we could follow it, you know, like that would have been a really cool idea because you know just showing that little tiny bit of under the water makes me want to see more. It makes me want to feel the depth. You know that that could have been where you push the swamp element. You could have done an underwater environment of the swamp, and it would have been you know really cool and um, an original thing. No one else did that. So that's just a little. You gave us a little taste of something that I really want to see more of. Yeah, like if you brought this to a finish, you know that would be great, and you pushed all the elements. If you, if you do bring it to finish, I would definitely do that. Add some things in the foreground, make the bottom lower, add the whole bunch of underwater stuff, little fish or catfish or something. A lot of murk. But yeah, I mean, it's a great concept. It works really well with the idea. Um, I just think, you know, if, if you're going to push it farther, which I think you should, um, add more underwater stuff and really finish the top. Yeah, I mean, I, I uh, you know, I... I was really looking for something like this doing the challenge because I knew immediately everybody would do tree men yeah like that I I did this challenge with that in mind that I, I wanted to see if anybody would do something different or put more thought into it than just the obvious tree man yeah. you know like that's why I, I did it it's a generic idea and generic ideas are always the most challenging because they've been done and done and done and done and beaten to death yeah, so it's finding something that you can bring into it that's also yours and is cool and exciting. And just in general, overall critique for everybody, you know, D 
do the research, you know, mind map the thing, write down Swamp Elder, circle Swamp, circle Elder, branch off in all directions on the paper, write down what each thing means to you, and then branch off of those, and then connect the dots. You know, like, look up stuff that's in the swamp. What is an elder? You know, what, do you, what, what does that conjure up? You know, like a chieftain, all this other stuff. But, um, yeah, you know, try and just think more about your concepts before you just jump right into it. So, uh, yeah. So without further ado, I guess we'll announce the winner. Yep. And the winner for this Bloodsport 2 challenge is Lee. Lee. Congratulations, Lee. Lee. Congratulations, Lee. You did it. You did it, Lee. You won. Lee, you won because you took a risk with the character. You did something that is organic and works in the environment, while at the same time is, you know, an original take on something that actually exists. This thing looks like, you know, a believable creature that would exist in that environment. Yeah. Like, it, it, you did a really good job incorporating the studies into your own original design. And even though, like we said before, the swamp environment is a little lacking compared to what you focused on the character, it's still there and it still works as a mood. I would like to see more if you push it to finish, but in terms of the Swamp Elder, the challenge, this definitely worked um, far and away the best. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you did the challenge, you made an original idea, but you also brought it to a level of finish you know and and you applied your studies obviously so you know it's just a matter of pushing it more i mean like it's the same critique i had for you know sean which is just a great concept yours is a little bit more finished so uh-huh. like you know like if sean i mean like if sean had pushed his to a finish you know and you'd push yours all the way i would have had a hard time really choosing between the two of them yeah, and like, you know, one, one thing you have in this that's going on that a lot of the other entries didn't have. I mean, again, we had like 33 entries. We had a lot. But, you know, there's there's two things you got to do, and one comes first and one comes second. The first is to find an original design, which is very hard to do. And the second thing to do is to add character to it, because this thing feels like a swamp elder. Yeah. It's, not just, it's not just a design. You actually gave the creature character, which I don't think anyone else in the contest really did. Yeah, like, just look at his... His posture, his face, yeah. his expression, the way his eyes sags. I mean, he just looks old. I think he gives the feeling of old without going crazy with it, you know? Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, yeah it's really well. Congratulations, man. So, what did you want to do next? Did you want to talk about the next one? Yeah, Lee was in here. I don't see him posting in the chat, though. He was in here earlier. Uh, so, yeah, congratulations, Lee. And now we're going to talk about Bloodsport 3, which is my challenge. We've seen Trevor's, we've seen Dave's, and now it's my turn. And I came up with a really hard one. And I came up with it based on the crits I do every night on my stream. And every time I crit somebody, one thing keeps coming back over and over and over and over again. I have a hard time thinking of any pain over a crit I've done where this wasn't an issue. And the issue is composition. People always tend to bite off more than they could chew with um, what they're trying to draw. They have a lot of ideas. They want to fit all the ideas on the page, but they don't know how to structure it and make it appealing. So what I've done is I've come up with a very complicated thing, but it's a very fun thing that I think all of you are going to want to um, try your hand at. And what that is is I was thinking, you know, what's the most basic thing we can do with compositions that's still exciting and uses enough ideas that you can, you know, do basically whatever you want with it. And what I'm going to ask you to do is redesign the cover for the original Gauntlet video game. If you guys are familiar with Gauntlet, it's the first dungeon crawler arcade game. It came out in the 70s. There's four characters, and you need to put all four of them in the same image and compose it in such a way that it's still interesting. Now, whether you do it action-based, where they're in the middle of a combat, that's fine. Whether you do it design-based, where it's literally just about the characters on the page and how they're laid out, that's fine. Whichever way you want to compose it, whatever the focus is going to be, that's fine. The trick is, though, it has to be placed on the page in such a way that it looks like a cover design. Mm -hmm. And you have to balance all four characters accordingly. Now, in case you don't know, when you're doing the research, the four characters have to be the four characters from the game. 
And those characters are Thor, or a warrior, Merlin, or a wizard, a Valkyrie, or a female warrior, and Questor the elf. <laughs> or, or an archer. So I don't care if you do literally Thor, Merlin, uh, a Valkyrie, and Questor, or if you just do elf, archer, some kind of wizard, some kind of warrior, and some kind of female warrior. I would say do it closer to what the game is because that would be funner and work better, but if you're really not finding a way to make a Valkyrie work, make it a female warrior. But the real challenge in this is going to be placing all four of them on the page and having them all be as important as the other without losing focus. Yep, and remember that everything's a tool. Their weapons are tools. You yep. know, the way that they are placed, the way that they're moving around each other, all of these things create shapes. And when you work with multiple characters, you have to keep that in mind, is that it's a composition. Compositionally, yep. does this make sense? It Does it work as a design? Is it pleasing to the eye? And we don't want you to just bullshit it. We don't want you to fumble oh. around in the dark trying to figure out what composition means. You know, you want to look it up. You know, do research. What is... If you don't do composition ever, look it up. Like, what is composition? What's the rule of thirds? You know, the golden rule. You know, how do I do iconic compositions, cross composition, all that exactly. stuff. Exactly. And when you send us your studies, because that's required for all these challenges, I want to see multiple composition sketches. I want to see you actually working at how the image is going to be laid out before you even start painting it. I want to see the image broken down into pieces, how it's going to work, all that stuff. Because if you hand me something that isn't composed well, I'm going to know. I'm going to know right off the bat that you didn't do a compositional sketch and you didn't study it. Uh, Sam's asking any specifics on format. You yeah. can't do landscape and you can't do portrait. It has to be a cover for the game. So if you're, if you're wondering, it's going to have to be an upward rectangle. And basically, if you want specific uh, details on what the size has to be... Yeah, we'll put it on the post. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it on the post, but basically I'm going to post an old Nintendo game cover. I'm going to post an old box art for a video game, and that's going to be the rough size the image has to be, or the rough relative shape. It's an upward rectangle. So that's what it's going to be. They have to have the weapons. All four characters have to be in it, and that's my only requirement. You can yeah. do you can do more if you want to, but the thing is you have to do it wisely. If you want to include the monsters, that's fine. Just do it in an intelligent way. If you want to include the environment of the dungeon they're in, that's fine. If you want to include any of the items from the game, that's also fine. But the thing is, you know, you have to compose it in such a way that it's not going to detract from the four characters. Because the only requirement is that it's a cover image, it has all four characters, and all four of their weapons are present. Yep, and it works as a design. And what I mean by cover is you have to plan on there being text somewhere, so you got to yeah. keep that in mind. Not only are you composing it on the page, you're composing it on a page where there's room for Gauntlet, the game, and then at the bottom, brought to you by Tengen, or something like that. You have to plan it like it's a cover. Yeah. And the thing is, I know a lot of you are going to have a hard time with this. That's the point of it. I tried to make a really hard challenge. If you can pull this off, it's an instant portfolio piece because these four characters are the four characters that have been regurgitated in every mainstream fantasy thing since the beginning of the industry. They're all there. Everyone knows what Gauntlet is. Everyone knows what these character archetypes are. And cover images are in high demand no matter where you are. So if you pull it off well and it's a cover for something recognizable, it's going to be a really good portfolio piece. Hey, and you'll get exposure from this. Yep. So, yeah, so just, just really push yourself on this one. We want you to do something you've never done before. For a lot of you, I know that's the case. Exactly. And uh, once you take on a challenge like this, it's not as scary anymore. So just do it full force. You have two weeks to do this. Yep. So you got two weeks from today. That's what it is, two weeks from today. I'll be putting a blog post up tonight with all the requirements on the uh, Crimson Daggers Blood Sports blog, and I'll put it up on Twitter and the Facebook if anyone has any questions. And uh, I'm going to get off of here now. My stream is going to start in about 10 minutes over at livestream.com slash Daniel's Danger Room, and I'll be doing my two-hour study there. And if anyone's got questions about this challenge or anything else, you can feel free to ask me over there. And... Uh... You know, everybody had a lot of good entries, 33 entries, it's pretty huge. But even though you didn't win, if you weren't in the top three, 
we just want to let you know that you should uh never surrender